Hello, my name is Jillian Lucas and I'm a career coach with Modern Guild. Welcome to Interviewing 101, Interviewing Basics You Thought You Knew. This module was designed to help you master basic interview techniques. More than anything, I hope this virtual workshop will help prepare you and boost your confidence in order to ace your next interview. Let's review our workshop agenda. We will begin by reviewing the essential elements of interview preparation. Next, we'll take a look at a recruiter's insight and review tips to get yourself noticed. We will then focus on formulating winning responses. We will review specific strategies to help you develop your responses. We'll also take a look at common interview questions. We will then move on to interview follow-up. Lastly, we'll talk about dealing with nerves, because let's face it, interviewing can be a very nerve-wracking experience, especially if it's your first professional interview. Let's begin with prepping for the interview. When prepping for your interview, there are three things you must know. One, the company, two, yourself, and three, your resume. The company. This involves doing your homework and memorizing the basics. Some key facts you want to know include a basic company overview, the age, size, structure, and company locations. Who are the organization's competitors? Is it a public, private, or nonprofit organization? What are the names of key executives? What is the organization's mission? What are the company's products or services? What are potential career paths within this organization? So how do you go about researching the company? There are a variety of resources available to you. First, I'd suggest utilizing the Modern Guild Knowledge Center. Spend time on the company website. Check out and follow the company on LinkedIn. Stay informed by reading credible news publications. I'd also encourage you to take advantage of your Career Center resources, such as Vault.com, which provides detailed industry and company information. On-campus employer information sessions can also be incredibly informative. Get smart on current events. Be sure you are up to date with happenings in the field. A tip that I have for you here is to utilize Google Alerts. Google Alerts will enable you to automatically be notified when new content from news, web, blogs, or discussion groups matches the terms you have selected. So, if you have an interview with Bloomingdale's, Bloomingdale's would be used as your keyword to stay up to date with the latest news at Bloomingdale's. Yourself. Your job during the interview is to sell yourself as the best candidate for the job. You must know your key strengths and be able to align these key strengths to your relevant experiences. Know what value you are to the employer. The Value Proposition Builder is an assignment that will be completed in exploration and immersion phases. This assignment, along with your career coach conversations, will help you in articulating your experiences, skills, and value. Lastly, you should definitely know why you should be hired. Your resume. Remember, anything on your resume is fair game during your interview. Be prepared to discuss everything. Be sure to highlight your most relevant experiences to the job for which you are interviewing. So, if you are interviewing for a job at a nonprofit organization, you'll want to highlight relevant experiences such as related internships, volunteer work, related extracurriculars, and or coursework. Be ready to communicate your measurable achievements as well as your key strengths we reviewed previously. Do's and don'ts of interviewing. Do dress professional and conservatively. For men and women, this means a suit. If your suit happens to be wrinkled, be sure to steam it or have it steamed. Handheld steamers can be purchased for around $25. Not a bad investment if you have multiple interviews coming up. Have a polished appearance. Your grooming and attire should be neat. 
For women, this includes simple makeup and minimal jewelry. Also steer clear of wearing any type of fragrance to your interview. Be sure your breath is fresh. Brush your teeth or pop a mint prior to your interview. Arrive 5 to 10 minutes early. If you have never been to the office, you may want to do a dry run the day prior to ensure you do not show up late. Bring a portfolio to your interview. As you can see in the picture, the woman is holding a leather-bound portfolio folder. These can be purchased at any office supply store and likely your campus bookstore. The portfolio folder should contain numerous copies of your resume, which are printed on resume paper. If you aren't familiar with resume paper, it's a thicker cardstock than regular paper, comes in white and ivory, and can also be purchased at an office supply store or likely your campus bookstore. The reason we use resume paper is to help make a professional presentation. Inside your portfolio should also be a copy of your cover letter and your reference document, all on resume paper. You should also have a notebook and pen to jot down any notes you may wish to take. Do be positive and enthusiastic. Remember, the employer wants a candidate who is excited about the job. Also, don't forget to smile. It can be easy to forget to smile when we're nervous. Lastly, appreciate the interviewer's time. Don't forget to say thank you for the opportunity. Don't dress for a frat party. Always suit up. Pay attention to the details. For example, shoes should be polished and in good shape. Don't show up unorganized and unprepared. The portfolio folder will help you to appear organized. Remember to do your homework and know the three elements we discussed earlier, the company, yourself, and your resume. Don't arrive late. This will make a very negative first impression. You also will likely feel flustered, which isn't a good way to start your interview. Don't forget copies of your resume and a pen and paper. You don't want to ask your interviewer to borrow a pen. Don't act like the job is beneath you or uninteresting. Remember that the employer wants a candidate who wants the job. Don't forget to thank your interviewer. If you follow these tips of what to do and not do, you'll be on your way to making a good first impression. Insight from recruiters and tips to get noticed. How will you be evaluated? Recruiters are taking into account a variety of factors when evaluating candidates. First, experience. Do you have related experience? If so, how much and how valuable is your experience? Your job in the interview is to prove the value of your experience by highlighting transferable skills that were gained. Second, development potential. Are you worth investing in? The employer is investing time and money in you as an employee. You need to demonstrate that you can be developed and add value. Three, presentation, including dress and affect. Here, pay attention to your facial expressions and body language. This is a benefit of conducting a recorded mock interview. You may notice things such as your body language that you have been completely unaware of. Often, when we're nervous, we may display a nervous habit, such as hair twirling or pen clicking. Once you know your nervous tendencies, they can easily be avoided. Fourth, your ability to engage in professional conversation. Remember to keep it professional. Don't talk negatively about past supervisors or experiences. Lastly, education. Where do you go to school, your intended degree, major, GPA, honors, and academic achievements? Of course, remember, first impressions always count. What are recruiters really looking for? Below is a list of the top qualities and skills desired by employers. Beginning with teamwork ability, oral communication skills, decision-making and problem-solving abilities, ability to obtain and process information, planning and organizational skills, ability to analyze quantitative data, 
technical knowledge, writing and editing skills, ability to sell or influence others. It is key that you make the match between you and the job. You need to demonstrate that you have the skills they are seeking in a candidate. So if an employer is looking for someone who possesses the first three skills on this list, you need to be prepared with examples that prove you have those skills. Taking the second skill as an example, oral communication skills, perhaps you recently presented a project in class in which you received positive feedback from your classmates and professor. Sharing the details of this experience would help you in demonstrating the skill. How to formulate winning responses. Behavioral interviewing. Behavioral interviewing is a very common method used by employers. So what is it and why is it used? Behavioral interviewing is a technique used by employers to learn more about your past behavior in a particular situation. The employer is trying to predict or gauge how you will respond to future situations. Behavioral interviewing is said to be 55% predictive of future on-the-job behavior, whereas traditional interviewing is approximately 10% predictive. You'll notice most interview questions aren't really questions, but prompts which you'll be responding to. You know you're getting a behavioral question when you're asked about a past experience. For example, give me an example of a time when you demonstrated good leadership skills. Tell me about a time you had to work with a difficult person. Tell me about a difficult problem you faced recently and how you went about solving it. These are all examples of behavioral interview questions. So just how do you respond to these types of behavioral questions? The key is to be very specific, not vague or general. Give clear specific examples of when you've demonstrated the requested behaviors or skills. A technique to provide you a good framework for answering behavioral interview questions is called the STAR method. So let's take a look at the acronym. S and T, situation and task. Describe the situation or task you were faced with. This is gonna give the interviewer some context of what the situation looked like. A, action. Describe the action you took in that situation. R, results. What were the results of the action that you took? and these results should reflect positively on you. The results are what most students forget to highlight in their responses, and this is a really important aspect of your answer. When answering behavioral interview questions, you want to be sure that you're painting a clear picture of the scenario or example that you are providing. The focus should be on you and not others. Be sure to use I statements. Often students question, how long should my responses be? If you are hitting on all of these elements of the STAR method, your response should be approximately one to two minutes. You don't want to be talking longer than two minutes. In the next clip, you'll notice the candidate describe the situation, tell you the action that was taken, and then highlight the positive results of the action taken. Jillian, can you tell me about a time when you worked with a team and what specifically you contributed to the team? Sure. Uh, for the past year, uh, I have served as team captain for the Boston College Relay for Life event. And the Relay for Life, it's a 24-hour overnight relay-style walk that raises money to support the American Cancer Society. Uh, I'm known to be pretty organized, and so my friends from the student grilling club nominated me to be the team captain. So as team captain, I was responsible for attending the bi-weekly team captain's meetings, uh, communicating all the necessary event information to my 15 teammates, and also motivating my team members to raise money. Um, I also coordinated the on-site team logistics, uh, which included creating a walk schedule for my 15 teammates. Uh, 
we set an ambitious fundraising goal of five thousand uh, dollars. During the real club meetings, I I really made an effort to collect the input of my team members on various fundraising strategies. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we collectively decided to host a campus-wide barbecue, um, which would take place each Friday beginning the month before the relay event, and all the proceeds would be put toward our team fundraising goal. Uh, I also was able to convince the event planning committee uh, to uh, allow our team to sell hot dogs and hamburgers at the event. And the event was attended by over a 1,000 students. So in the end, my team raised over 6000 and we were all just so excited that we surpassed our fundraising goal. Wow, thanks for sharing. Thanks. Below you'll find several common interview questions. I'd like to highlight a couple of the questions and provide strategies to help you formulate winning responses. Let's start with the weakness question. Talking about your weakness or development areas can be tricky if you haven't prepared. Here I will share with you a technique that I call the 2080 rule. When discussing your weakness, you'll want to spend approximately 20% of your answer conveying the weakness and 80% discussing the steps that you've taken to overcome the weakness. For example, If public speaking is one of your development areas, perhaps you've decided to take a public speaking course this semester to help develop your public speaking abilities. Or maybe you attend local Toastmasters classes to practice speaking in front of groups. The focus of your answer would be these action steps, and to enhance your answer further, share some of the positive results of the action steps that you've taken. Let's take a look at the first prompt. Tell me about yourself. We'll spend time on this prompt since you'll find that many interviews will begin with this statement. This is very open-ended and often students question what information should be shared and how much. We're going to review a 90-second framework for tackling tell me about yourself. You'll want to begin by focusing on any relevant personal information, such as where you're from. Next, you'll want to share your academic experience. Where do you go to school? What are you studying? If you studied abroad, this would be a good place to share. Next, you'll want to convey your professional experience, including relevant internships, leadership activities, on-campus jobs, summer jobs, or extracurriculars. You want to wrap this response up with why you're interested in the position. You will view a clip of a candidate on the next slide who responds effectively to the tell me about yourself prompt. Jillian, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? at Boston College, and I'm from Buffalo, New York, uh, but I spent most of my time growing up in Japan. Uh, I actually had the opportunity uh, this past semester to study in Spain, uh, where all of my courses were completed in Spanish. I'm a double major at Boston College in psychology and Spanish, and last summer uh, I spent time interning for a great nonprofit organization uh, whose mission was to improve the quality of life for hospitalized children. Uh, So while I was there, I worked to recruit volunteers such as artists, musicians, uh, and play therapists. Uh, I also helped complete a mural at a children's hospital. I I really enjoyed engaging with the patients while I was at the hospital. Um, And at Boston College, I'm a research assistant in the psychology lab, uh, as well as a TA for an intro to psychology course. I'm really interested uh, in the children's outreach internship position with your organization. Uh, I'm really passionate about helping children that are in need, and I'm confident that my ability to communicate and engage with children in distress uh, will allow me to make a positive contribution. I I also believe that my Spanish skills will come in handy while serving Spanish-speaking families. Questions for employers. At the conclusion of your interview, your interviewer will ask you if you have questions. It is imperative that you have questions prepared in advance. 
Having good questions will help you demonstrate your interest in the position and it's an opportunity to show that you've done your company research. Have a minimum of five to six questions prepared in case any of your questions happen to be answered during the course of the interview. So just what should you ask? So Jillian, it looks like we're at the end of the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. I was wondering if your company pays for graduate school. The candidate in the previous clip asked a bad question. The reason this is a bad question is that the candidate is inquiring about a perk or benefit. You do not want to inquire about benefits such as salary, vacation time, etc. during your interview. Wait until you have an offer on the table to inquire about benefits. Below you will find examples of good questions to ask your interviewer. Plan to ask approximately three to four questions. Remember, you may be meeting with more than one person, so be sure to have additional questions for each person you meet with during the course of your interview. Interview follow-up. Don't forget post-interview etiquette. So you've spent a lot of time preparing, and hopefully you're feeling good about your interview performance. What comes next? First, be sure to collect the business cards of everyone you meet with during the course of your interview. Having individuals' contact information will allow you to follow up with a thank you. Modern Guild highly encourages you to send a thank you email within 24 hours of your interview. This also applies to the industry expert meetings you'll be conducting in the Modern Guild program. Although you will not be sending a handwritten thank you note to your Modern Guild industry experts, you should mail a handwritten thank you note to your interviewers following every professional interview. Your thank you note should be written on plain stationery or a simple thank you note card. Please see the Knowledge Center on your Modern Guild page to view a sample thank you letter. This is going to help you develop the content of your thank you letter. The key is to personalize your thank you note, reference your specific discussion, and reiterate your interest in the position. Following up. During your interview, you should have been informed of the hiring timeline or time frame in which the employer will make a decision on a candidate. If this hasn't been shared with you, ask. If you find that you haven't heard back in the time frame communicated to you, you should follow up with an email checking in on the status of the position and also reiterating your interest in the position. A good rule of thumb is to wait two weeks before following up, unless of course a specific timeline has been provided. Dealing with nerves. It is completely normal to be nervous before your interview. Job interviews are stressful by nature. We'll review some techniques to help you relax and stay focused during your interview. First, visualize a successful performance. Visualizing the desired interview outcome can help you to perform well. It's a technique used by many professional athletes. Second, be sure to get a good night's sleep and try to do a relaxation exercise the night before, the morning of, and right before your interview. Deep breathing can be tremendously effective if done correctly. I would encourage you to sit comfortably in a chair, to close your eyes and take four deep, calming breaths, breathing in through your nose for four, holding and exhaling through your mouth for six. You're welcome to try it now. On the day of your interview, avoid excess caffeine, which can make you feel even more jittery than you might already feel. Be overly prepared. Remember to thoroughly research the company to help you feel more on top of things. Prepare your stories and examples ahead of time that speak to the employer's needs. Practice a lot. Practice with your career coach, your friends, or your family members. The good news is that interviewing is a learned skill. The more you practice, the better you'll become. 
you'll also start to feel more comfortable and confident in talking about yourself. During the actual interview, be sure to listen carefully and don't be afraid to ask for clarification if you need it. Try your best to be in the moment and really be yourself. You want the employer to get to know you. Wrap up and next steps. There are many additional interviewing resources that are available to you. I would encourage you to check out the Knowledge Center's interviewing guide for additional interviewing tips and sample questions. If you're in the exploration phase, you'll have a chance to practice developing and delivering your responses in the Interviewing 201 assignment. You'll work with your career coach to help perfect your answers. If you are in the immersion phase, you'll actually be participating in live mock interviews, which will be reviewed by your career coach. You will spend time with your career coach focusing on your interviewing strengths and areas for development. During your Modern Guild program, you're also encouraged to practice role-playing common questions with your career coach. You may also want to check out on-campus resources. Often career centers will offer mock interviews or even an online tool to help you practice interviewing. Connecting with professionals in your field of interest can help give you an insider's perspective on interview norms for that industry. Professionals can also help you identify the essential skills needed to be successful in the field. This is important material to highlight in your interview. If you have any questions about anything reviewed in this module, please feel free to discuss with your career coach. I hope this workshop has helped you to feel more prepared to be successful in your next interview. Best of luck in all of your future interviews. Thank you.